Is there any way to do 200 million? I'm sorry, are you for real? Dr. Michael J. Burry, you are hereby charged with three counts. One, of diagnosing the Federal Reserve as ignorant of financial history, addicted to stimulus, losing all of its credibility with investors. Two, of refusing to turn the volume down on Fury of the Maker's Hand by Devil Driver when SEC officers surprised you in San Jose. Three, and most disturbing of all, of disparaging House Speaker Pelosi by saying she shouldn't be allowed to profit from insider trading. You may argue none of these are crimes, but don't forget, it is possible that we are living in a completely fraudulent system. It's possible that we are in a completely fraudulent system. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? <laughs> Dr. Michael J. Burry hasn't gone to prison yet. But you probably know that according to Burry's recent 13F filing for Scion Asset Management published on the 15th of August 2022, he pulled the plug on each and every one of his investments. The only US security held by Scion Asset Management at this time is in private prison company Geo Group, in which the big short investor has $3.309 million. He liquidated almost 100% of his portfolio. This video is divided into five parts which are time stamped for ease of reference. One, where is Scion Asset Management's $290 million now? In other words, what could have happened to this money that Bowie has recouped after selling these companies? Where is it now and where could it go next? Two, how are other hedge fund managers investing in September 2022? Three, what do Michael Burry's tweets reveal about his expectations for the stock market? Four, of all companies, why Geo? Five, what are some catalysts that could drive the share price of Geo Group upwards? One, after having taken close to $290 million off the table, what can we conclude? Two things. First, Michael Burry is seeing growing macroeconomic risk factors. We have no confidence in your ability to identify macroeconomic trends. And as a result, preemptively, he sold all of its holdings in anticipation of a major downturn in the stock market. The second possibility is that Scion Asset Management may see the market generally as overvalued and opted to raise cash in a bid to take advantage of another down leg in the stock market. Michael Burry called out the US government for backstopping financial markets and the economy. He warned that too much stimulus ultimately would lead to a devastating downturn. With recent spending bills, he says, including the student loan forgiveness, now approaching $2 trillion this year, we have the emergence of the fiscal put. That's what he said last Thursday, suggesting that the government is functioning as a put option for investors by limiting their potential losses. Many of the securities Burry has disposed of are in companies that he has held for only a few short months. Therefore, he could have written these short-term capital gains losses off against the Scion Asset Management income in order to lower his taxes. But of course, according to IRS rules, the maximum sum an individual can write off against personal income each year is $3,000. Losses exceeding this must be carried forward to future years. The rules applying to investment institutions may differ. Since there are more words in the US tax code than there are in the King James Bible, I wouldn't attempt to get granular on Sion's tax liabilities myself. He's obviously no fan of paying millions of dollars to a government, however, whose representatives, including Pelosi, make untold millions from insider knowledge while hiring tens of thousands of armed IRS agents to target middle income earners. But one crucial outcome from this latest 13F filing is that now that Burry's hedge fund holdings are under $100 million in securities, it will no longer be necessary to disclose quarterly filings with the Securities and Exchange Commission. That may change, of course, in the event that Scion's holdings exceed that threshold in the future. Number two, how are other hedge fund managers investing in September 2022? On the face of it, it would appear that Burry's bearishness concerning the overall state of the US share market outweighs his future cash flow projections and profitability expectations of the companies that he previously invested in heavily. I may have been early, but I'm not wrong. This puts him at odds with other prominent investors and hedge fund managers, many of whom have increased their holdings in the very companies that Burry has exited. Ray Dalio, for instance. Peace. Yes. Okay, that's peace. The most important part out of all this is to get to that peace. Ah. Oh, ah. Uh through Bridgewater, invested heavily in Discovery Communications, according to his recent 13F, along with a number of other companies. Berkshire Hathaway has also purchased shares in new companies, with Buffett going on record previously as saying that he doesn't mind if the market drops in the short term because this simply presents Berkshire with a more compelling buying opportunity than when analysts are universally bullish. 
Don't forget, the 13F only provides a glimpse of a snapshot in time. Burry may have bought more shares since filing it, or he may have invested in non-reportable assets such as precious metals, overseas stocks, or even credit default swaps. The likelihood of him investing in cryptocurrency remains small since his distaste for Bitcoin is well documented. Nevertheless, it's unwise to sell all of your shares just because one individual expects the worst at one moment in time. As Jordan Belfort put it best in The Wolf of Wall Street, the name of the game is diversification. 3. What do Michael Burry's tweets reveal about his expectations for the stock market going forward? And what reasons could be behind Burry's decision to sell all of Scion's shares recently? Well, a cursory glance of his deleted tweets offers some clues. In a recent tweet in which he included charts, Burry explained that just because the stock market crashed at the onset of COVID nearly three years ago, that doesn't mean that we shouldn't expect further drops in the future. He explains how the market once again could bottom if history is a guide. He notes that the initial downturn observed during the first half of 2022 has already pulled down the S&P 26%, the Nasdaq 35%, and Bitcoin down by 65%. It has pulled the price-to-earnings ratio of the S&P 500 down significantly, closer to its baseline. He also goes on to stress the possibility of what he calls earnings compression. The earnings side of the price-to-earnings ratio seems to have been overlooked by many, the main reason being that earnings have remained quite flat or have increased slightly over the past few quarters for lots and lots of companies. But, as the Empire State Manufacturing Survey published by the Federal Reserve reveals, businesses do not expect the economic outlook to improve during what remains of 2022. This is based on data from a survey of 200 manufacturing executives in New York State to uncover their thoughts on general business conditions. The results fell 31.3% versus the expected plus 8%. It was one of the lowest polls ever, going back to May 2020 or to the 2008 financial crisis. If the predictions of these individuals unfold as expected, falling earnings would cause the weighted average price-to-earnings ratio of the S&P 500 to go up, making stocks more expensive, so you have to pay more money for every dollar of profit that the company is able to make. Even right now, without this earnings compression, the price-to-earnings ratio of the S&P 500 stands at a multiple of 21.7. Historically, the S&P 500 has traded at an average of about 16 times earnings, and this is close to what Geo Group's price-to-earnings ratio is, and this is where we return to Bury's investment in Geo Group. Of all companies, why Geo? Likely because of the company's government-secured cash flows, its recession-resistant business model, and an incredibly cheap valuation, it seemed like a compelling investment opportunity for Burry. Burry has got misgivings about the future of the US share market, and using historical data, he predicted in May 2022, as we've mentioned, that investors can expect stocks to fall a lot further from here. In his mind, taking most if not almost all of his money off the table and investing what remains in prison companies like Geo Group could be an effective way of insulating himself from market turmoil, especially since shares in Geo have already taken a beating down to historic lows. What's weird, though, is that in the last 13F video, I mentioned that it didn't make any sense to me that Burry had sold Scion's shares in Geo. People will withdraw their money. Watch that one. Geo is a cash cow. It's cash generating activity subdivide into a number of distinctive business operations, including electronic monitoring, in custody rehabilitation programs, post release support, trade schools, and mentorship schemes. Each one of these contributes to a high consistent cash flow figure, while Geo Group has been selling assets, deleveraging its balance sheet, and restructuring its outstanding debt maturities. The shares looked underpriced months ago and still do, regardless of your opinion on the morality or otherwise of private prisons versus government prisons. Perhaps Michael Burry watched my video and realized the error of his ways. Perhaps he thought, okay, it's time to buy Geo shares again. Just half a million of them though, nothing crazy here. If so, congratulations, Dr. Burry. Perhaps now you can finally start making some money. Maybe nobody else will see in Geo Group the potential that Burry sees, but as the saying goes, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king.
What are some catalysts that could drive the share price of Geo Group upwards? The Geo Group makes its money from leasing facilities to government agencies and managing and looking after some of these. With the majority of revenues coming from the leasing business, the company's real estate assets generated $588 million in revenues in the second quarter of 2022, which showed an increase of 4% year over year. While the Geo Group has got international operations in Australia, South Africa and the UK, the US is the firm's main market with a revenue share of 92%. Even during a recession, demand for prison and detention facilities and space doesn't decline. If anything, it increases because people are so mad at having no money that they turn to violent crime to make ends meet. I'm not saying I approve of that, but this is just what happens historically throughout civilization. Meaning, prison operators like the Geo Group are in the most recession-proof business that you can think of, especially if you expect a major market downturn to take place in the near future and you expect growing economic headwinds. The Geo Group's business is very cheap, despite shares soaring just 11% on Monday last week, or two weeks ago rather, after Cyan Asset Management disclosed its 13F filing and revealed its investment in the company. The company's guidance for the financial year of 2022 calls for average funds from operations of $2.40 to $2.46, which implies a valuation factor of just 3.4 over and above the actual cost of the shares, which is really astonishing. The prison operator is cheap, mainly because it's cut its dividend last year. That's right, you probably know it used to be a REIT or a real estate investment trust. It decided not to become one and decided just to become a normal C-Corp and pay corporation taxes like other companies out there. And that did hurt a lot of dividend and income investors who decided to withdraw their money thinking, well, we're not going to get the dividend. Let's just cut our losses. However, the Geo Group cut its dividend in order to free up cash to pay down debt, which the company is now doing. And Bowie actually quite likes this approach. The company repaid $375 million in debt since the start of financial year 2020, 130 million of that debt was paid back just this year. The company ended the second quarter of 2022 with two billion dollars in debt and it will continue to prioritize debt repayments. So because of the government assured cash flows and the fact that there's less debt than there used to be and the electronic monitoring operation and other various factors about the business, this is a compelling opportunity. Downside risks include maybe the government will restructure prisons, although they've been claiming or threatening to do that for a long time and haven't really done anything about it. Perhaps there'll be a reduction in the number of people actually needing to be housed in prisons. Perhaps Geo will have to sell more of its operations to pay down its debt, or perhaps it won't succeed in the way that many expect with its electronic monitoring business. But generally speaking, the opportunity seems to be reasonable. The other thing to bear in mind as well is whether or not they can actually restructure their debt maturities timetable or whether they actually have to pay down a lot of debt before 2027, 2028. And th this is something that you need to read their financial statements and company reports in order to get more clarity and information about. So these are just some thoughts on it. I think that it's a compelling opportunity. It's, it's one that Burry's invested in in the past. And he, according to many analysts, it could go up to $13, $15 from here. We hope this gave you some thoughts. And we're going to do more videos about Burry. If you enjoyed this one, please drop a like and consider subscribing. We hope to speak to you soon. All the very best. Have a great day.